point is that living as an artist is not a profession, it's a calling. At night, around 10 o'clock, I come down here at the studio, which is in the back of the building, and I paint primarily at night because, first of all, there are no interruptions. It's a magical time. It's totally free. It's up to you to, to go beyond yourself, basically. The only person I compete is not another artist. There's no point. I'm competing against myself. I have to outdo myself every time I do another painting. So that's a full-time occupation. I left home at 15. At the time, I was strictly copying the landscape. That was the early Benini. Later on, as I started to mingle with other artists in these different countries, I saw there was no limit to what one could do to be an artist. I relocated here in the hill country because, first of all, the landscape attracted me. The sculpture I had before, they were friends, people that I had, you know, I had befriended for over the years. All of a sudden, we have artists who wanted to be part of this. And next thing I know, we had to build the roads, put signage, uh, get liability insurance and all of that, and it's turned into a big circus. And the circus is on a growing process. Ultimately, Ultimately, there was no decision made. It's just, it's happening on its own volition. This is God-forsaken land. It only grows what it wants. Only thing seems to be doing fine is the sculpture. I didn't realize why I was so into the rose, to exclusion of everything else. And then after about 10 years that I kept giving different answers, the truth came to my mind. My grandmother, she had a rose garden, and because of her belief system, all the roses were red, a deep, rich red. She allowed me the privilege of going inside the closed-in area where these roses were. There was the cistern with the rain water. And so, with a little bucket, my little beach bucket, I would water these shrubs. So it was a perfect environment, the spring. And the roses she fertilized with the chicken manure that she had. And so they were enormous. I mean, they were bigger than my face. And then in 1986, I painted the last rose because I didn't want to be known as the rose painter. And that's why I switched again, a drastic change from the roses to the geometry, uh, which was very, it was a field where I had failed every year when I was going to school, geometry and mathematics. So at the age of 46, 47, I got deeply into that. At the age of 62, after having been so neat, as you can see in all of my work, total control of the medium, it became kind of like a time of reckoning. What have I done with my life? I'm going to be judged with... And I also realized that it was taking me way too long a time to do one of those ribbon paintings. And so I started playing with color. Use it strictly as, as it came out, you know, 
with no plans, no drawings like I'd done all my life. It was like a, the childhood that I never had. And for a whole year, I did nothing but these chaotic paintings because they had no beginning, they had no hand, there was no order, there was no structure, there was no composition, strictly color. And I called it Corti Chaos because of that, because they had no control. But again, there was no work, there was no pain. After all those years to master this blending, uh, I had to go back to that. And so I introduced the spheres again and then the ovum and uh, and I would paint the background totally controlled. I mean, 20 coats of red to get the glowing. And then I had to let go of the control and rely on the accident. And that's where it got really painful because I didn't want to ruin it. But that ruining was the chance element that makes them special. My work comes from a dimension that is really not related to my emotions or to my well-being. It comes from the great mystery. I don't think you want this on record.